Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Uh, this is the supplemental midweek edition, and uh, it's the it's our opportunity here to talk about new knife drops and uh, new things that are coming uh, across my desk. And, um, you know, because this is the kind of stuff you don't want to talk about before an interview uh, with uh, the kind of knife makers we talk to on this show, happily. Uh, so here we are, and uh, I hope you're all doing well. It's right before Thanksgiving. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, have uh, time to slow down and relax, enjoy your family, feed yourself well, spoil, spoil yourself, lay on the couch, get yourself ready to get back at it. Uh, when the week is over. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, there will be no Thursday Night Knives this week uh, because that's Thursday. And uh, I plan on being either not fit to be on the air or just passed out on the couch, you know, that kind of thing. Or I, I know where I'll be. I'll be scrubbing dishes. So uh, in any case, uh, no Thursday Night Knives this week. Uh, so this past uh, Thursday night, Knives. We had the Patreon giveaway, and it was Kevin Seastrom. He won the Tucson TS16, which I am told is a classic uh, Tucson, and uh, it, it comes in a couple of variations. This is the one with the titanium handle and uh, D2 steel, and uh, uh, a great knife. It was donated to us by Dave, this old sword blade reviews, uh, and uh, we were very Grateful to get that. Thank you, sir. So that knife is on the way to you, Mr. Seastrom. So uh, that's about it for our housekeeping. Uh, let's move on to new releases in the knife world. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So before we get to the new releases, there's actually a bit of somber news. Uh, the founder of Topps Knives, Mike Fuller, uh, died this past week. And, uh, you know, he leaves behind him a legacy uh, of, of great knives, a great knife company, uh, a company that is always moving forward, but always paying heed to its catalog. They, they, they have a huge catalog of knives for, you know, especially made for uh, military and also outdoorsmen and law enforcement. Uh, but his main mission when he first started uh, was for military and law enforcement. And uh, one of the knives I have by Tops that really harkens back to their original kind of style, their first sort of style, is this uh, Interceptor. It's a it's a Tanto. It's got that cool hole pattern right by the uh, by the thumb ramp. It is 1095 steel, as most of them are, though uh, they they do use 154 for their stainless models. And to me, this is just the quintessential tops knife uh, in in a shorter package. Um, it's a it's a great knife. All of these knives, all of the things that they put out, are fantastic. And uh, I'm not. I, I feel like I'm using this as an example to show off my knives. I'm not, but like uh, this kind of weapon, small, handy thing they make, as well as this kind of outdoorsy camp knife. So my point is just rugged, hard use knives uh, across a spectrum of uses for a, a spectrum of knife lovers and, and uh, outdoors people and, and law enforcement officers and military. And uh, Mike Fuller will be missed. He handed over the reins to the company in 2015 to Leo Espinoza, who has done an amazing job, you know, designing many of the knives that I love and collect by them. Uh, so uh, uh, another somber passing. We've had a few this year. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, pay some respect to Mike Fuller from Topps Knives. Uh, next, we do have the, uh, the Best Tech Arctic. This is a new knife from Best Tech that... When I looked at it, the very first uh, first thing I thought was Ed Cope. Looks like an Ed Cope knife to me. Uh, Ed Cope is a, a knife maker from Hawaii. Well, he's not from Hawaii, but he's in Hawaii at the present moment uh, making knives. Uh, he, he learned under the tutelage of Tom Mayo, and uh, we did a great interview with him here on the show. Uh, but I look at this, it looks like an Ed Cope-inspired knife. In any case, uh, it's very handsome. You know, it's got a D2 blade uh 
the D2 steel blade. Uh, it's that high harpoon um, clip point, the holes in the, in the handle, G10, 5.4 ounces, three and a half. So really basically what this is, is best tech getting back to what they do best. Uh, that is offering kind of uh, high value budget knives. And I, I hear some people bristling at that. They do make some spectacular high-end knives, but when they first came onto my radar, it was more uh, the value, uh, the build, the action, and the design you were getting for the amount of money you were paying. And uh, this is kind of, uh, well, back to those uh, brass tacks. So really handsome knife. I I'm curious if uh, if there's any Ed Cope in inspiration or I don't know if he designed it or or what, or if I'm just latching on to something and, it, and it's not that much like that. So anyway, you let me know. You tell me. So next, they're discontinuing another Benchmade. And uh, this one is the Cebu. Now, the Cebu uh, originally was meant to be a very, very high-end EDC. Uh, this is their outgoing version of it. It's their gold class version. Originally, uh, it was black G10, where you see the white on this one, and then these beautiful Coca-Bolo wood inlays where you see the, the crimson G10 on these ones here. And uh, they had uh, this, so this was a blue class knife, had that, had that same clip, and I can't remember, I think it was maybe S90 V steel, don't quote me on that, uh, but it was a premium EDC knife, and uh, you either loved it or hated it. Uh, I love the materials, not crazy about the design, uh, love, but love what they did with the handle. So this is the super expensive gold class version, and I say super expensive because I'm, I'm making assumptions. Their gold class knives are pretty expensive. Uh, this one comes in inlaid crimson and ivory G10, uh, 20 CV steel, apparently, but it looks to me like uh, Damasteel there. Uh, and 24 karat gold plated hardware, uh, because who doesn't need 24 karat gold plated hardware? Uh, but that's the whole point of these knives is just to mack them out as, as hard as you can and, and, uh, just make it the most spectacular version of that knife possible. Uh, ProTech Knives does that in, in what I feel is superior fashion. Uh, when they, when they, when they go all out on a blade, on a model, um, you know, they, they'll make a limited run of highly engraved, highly uh, uh, fussed over knives, and they do it beautifully. Anyway, this is about the Benchmade Cebu. Uh, so it is headed out, but before it does, it gets the gold class uh, touch. Uh, uh, Jim, if you could bring back the picture, the thing that really appeals to me is look at that backspacer. It is beautiful. It's sculpted to look like uh, I believe it's G10, uh, but it's sculpted to look like bamboo. And I think it's really, I don't know, just kind of rounds out the whole theme. So as far as the gold class knives go, I mean, you know, they're, they're not my cup of tea, but I know they are the cup of tea of some. And this seems like it would be a, uh, a great addition to have. Now, apparently the, the red and the white are evocative of Shinto, the Shinto religious colors. And so that's why they went with G10 and those colors. So there you have it. Uh, nice knife. Uh, not exactly like I said, my cup of tea, but here are some knives coming up that are my cup of tea. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So good friend of the show, Justin, his name is, uh, he goes by Lavender Pants on, uh, on YouTube, Lavender Pants 86, I believe. He sent me a couple of American Blade Works Model One knives. Um, now, American Blade Works uh, is a is a company that's uh, a one man show, and he's making one model right now, and uh, it's the Model One, and it's gone through four iterations. Now there's a fifth. Because uh, I was just uh, texting with him, he's got a fifth iteration. He's going to be sending to me. I'm going to check it out. But uh, Justin did something great in sending me versions three and four. Is um, he really illustrated what we talked about on the podcast uh, when I had Michael Martin. He's the gentleman who makes these knives. And a huge part of his process is process. A huge part of his process is evolution um, inspired by customer feedback. And uh, so I'll, I'll show you this first. This is the Model 3. 
Um, so this is the third, or not the Model 3. This is the Model 1 version 3. And uh, this was all milled out of, the handle is milled out of aluminum. It's got a, a liner lock in there. And uh, it's got an S35 VN blade. You can see some of the milling marks on it, which is kind of neat. And uh, looks like uh, Lavender Pants did a, a bit of hand rubbing on it. I think it came blasted and he rubbed the blast down, which gives it a really cool look. But the primary uh, the thing I want you to look at right here is the fact that you've got this big uh, flipper tab hanging down there and you have uh, fluted aluminum handles. Beautifully done. I'm a sucker for aluminum, especially how it wears with time and how it carries. You got a nice uh, sculpted clip there. Interesting action, not interesting. What I'm trying to say is uh, not fully evolved action. So if you focus on it and you and you preload it, as they say, uh, this will flip open freely. But if you're being lackadaisical about it, it will be lackadaisical. Uh, so yeah, and, and if you gently flip it and hold it up, you know, it's not gonna go. You gotta really juice it and then it'll flip open. So really an excellent knife. Uh, part of the uh, design has to do, I think, with creating a little choil right here for you to choke up and use your fingers. Uh, but in this version three, he didn't quite get the geometry uh, that he wanted for the flipping action that was being demanded by the public uh, with that flipper set up there. So version two, or I'm sorry, version four, this is the, uh, comes in a micarta sandwich kind of style with a beautifully machined backspacer of, not sure if it's titanium or aluminum, and nested liners. But look at that flipper. It stands much less proud and, and uh, forward, forward to the pivot. And so when you flip it, man, it flies out. So immediately you pick up the three, you flip it, and you, you, you realize you have to do a little work. You have to be slightly conscious with it. Uh, and then with version four, oh my gosh, it's so dialed in. When you hit that flipper, it, it kicks like an automatic. It feels like you're firing a Protec. So, I mean, he really, he really made an improvement. And I think, um, I guess it's not so much with the, with the placement of the flipper it seems to be with the shape of the flipper and the height uh right there with that triangular shape it just i don't know it fires it out also he obviously dialed in the the detent better on the uh on the liner lock there so uh, so far those are the things i've noticed in uh differences i mean there are the cosmetic and build differences which are obvious but the action is so vastly improved um and Michael Martin is a very nimble knife maker. We talk about that a lot here where he takes in input and then he's a one man show. It's not like he's a cruise ship that he has to turn and it takes us several miles. You know, he's a, he's a cigarette boat out there and someone says, Hey, uh, starboard tack, uh, make the flip better. And he does it. He figures it out and he makes it. He has all the design chops and tools and all of the manufacturing tools at his, uh, beck and call. So he, he can do this. It's pretty amazing. It's a pretty amazing model for a, a knife company to be able to do this. Uh, I'm very impressed. He's going to send me the, the number five, the version five to check out. And I'll hold on for that for a few weeks. And uh, we talked about doing a deep cut about the process of updating uh, this model. So that's a, that'll be a little half hour show we'll do. And uh talk about the the model one and it's updating and the different versioning and yeah definitely check out the michael martin episode 148 knife junkie podcast it was a great conversation he's an interesting guy and uh yeah he kind of has this uh, sort of zen chill to him and i was like this this guy's just up there on his mountaintop making knives and listening to the public and doing an awesome job so yeah this model one impressive knife i like it a lot Another impressive knife comes to us, uh, comes to me and this desk and my pocket. And man, this is going to be hard to get rid of uh, from the Apex Pass Around Group. And this is uh, a Ray Laconico design. Ray Laconico, love his work. But this is by far my favorite of his designs, the Centauri. This knife is amazing. And 
at first glance, you would say uh, maybe that I don't care too much for the patterns. You know, it's got the Mr. Furley thing going on with the this pattern here and the this pattern here. But, you know, I'm not a, not a huge, great big fan of carbon fiber, but I like that kind, whatever kind that is. And uh, this Damasteel has won me over. This thing is is beautiful. Uh, Damasteel, I say Damasteel. I'm not sure if it's actually, it's Damascus. Uh, but in any case, it is beautiful. Something about this knife uh, originally captivated me was the fact that it's kind of clearly a Ray Laconico. You can tell from the handle and the very simple, um, simple, severe design. But this one with that big, broad Warncliffe. Okay, you say modified Warncliffe sheep's foot. I'm not sure what it is, but with the extreme drop point and the and the slightly curving cutting edge and the blade to handle ratio, this thing is just outstanding to me. Uh, that swedge, everything about it. But uh, that's just the looks. When you have it in hand, you definitely notice how light it is and how thin it is and how awesomely it front flips. I'm sorry, that was terrible. And how beautifully it front flips. So that's what this is. It's a front flipper. And uh, if you don't have any, if you have no front flipping technique like me, it's it's great. You can, you can use it, do it with your forefinger like that. You can flip it with your thumb. You can slow roll it and, uh, it is really uh, something I'm going to have to get into the collection once No New Knife November is over. You can see the micro milling on the titanium side. And uh, yeah, this thing is really, really cool. There, there have been a lot of very good reviews of this knife uh, by uh, the likes of Nick Shabazz and uh, Slicey Dicey, all the usual characters. And uh, everyone seems to like it. And I knew that I had to check it out just for the design. Uh, but having it in hand, I think it'd be something that could go into the museum, the DeMarco Collection Museum of Knives, and represent front flippers. It would also represent uh, represent Ray Laconico designs because I don't have any of his knives. And uh, also, it would make a great super slim light uh, tuxedo carry. I mean, really, you show up at a wedding with this knife. Oh, let me let me help you with that cake, ma'am, or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 right at home with this, and uh, something about this backspacer really is a turn on to me. So they leave the the markings minimal on the blade, though they do put the artisan cutlery uh, logo there. Um, but mostly, it's identified by uh, inscriptions on the backspacer, and I think that that is very very classy. And there you have the uh, recessed lanyard loop if uh, lanyards are a thing you do uh, a leather fob on this might be might be quite fetching so uh please please if you have an opportunity check out this centauri by uh by artisan cutlery um it's you know well recently as i've been talking about i've been trying to not trying to stay american but 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 american designs are uh are the things that are turning me on the most um, but a lot of these American designs are made overseas. And this Centauri, if I were to try and get a custom one of these, I don't even know if he made custom of the, it's, it's not gettable. It's not doable. So, uh, I've been a little bit more, um, I've, I've been casting a wider net lately because I haven't been buying any, any knives except for that one GEC, which I will not open until December. Uh, but I've really been kind of, uh, thinking about, what it is I want and why I want it. And, uh, and a lot of it is coming down to, de to design again. And uh, I'm not going to take a, a moral stand though. Uh, though I do just find my proclivities uh, are, are headed in the, I'll listen to those big words. Uh, Jim should be busting me on that, but uh, uh, I, I do find that naturally I just tend towards the American made beefy uh, Spartan uh, and, uh, and strider and uh, hinderer type knife. Uh, but these kind of things I, I can't ignore. And look at this, it's beautiful clothes too. So if, you, uh, if you're if you only listening and, you, and you're not picking up on all these, uh, 
visuals uh, that I'm of showing of this knife. Just just wherever you, whenever you get to wherever you're going, uh, put in the search engine "artisan cutlery centauri" and check it out, and you'll know why my voice is wavering. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. And not for nothing, I think it would be handy in the kitchen in a pinch if you had to, you know. So um, anyway, that's it. That's it for my state of the collection. Though uh, today I was looking at uh, uh, a Messer HQ video. Uh, it's a gentleman named Joe. He lives over in Germany. He's an American over there. And uh, he does great uh, videos on slip joint knives. He has an outstanding collection. And today he was uh, talking about his users, or at least I think he put it up today. Uh, but I was checking out the video today and he was talking about his users and he was just kind of fussing over them and doing his monthly maintenance, uh, you know, where he polishes them. And uh, well, no, I think he leaves them patinaed, but he oils them. And anyway, he showed his, uh, his GEC 14 it looks exactly like this minus the pen blade. And I was like, what is that? God, that is awesome. The size is perfect. It's beautifully, I, I got to figure out, I got to get one of those. And then he mentions that, what it is. And it's like, oh yeah, that's the knife I have. So I've been carrying this today as trying to remember, you know, I, I have a lot of nice things here and uh, they should be carried and, and used except for a couple of things. You know, I'm, I'm hesitant to carry the old beer and sausage, though I've carried it a couple of times. I don't want to ruin that one. It seems like it's going to be very uh, mm, special in the future. Uh, so I'm trying to trying to be good with that. And a couple of other knives I'm not so you know keen on carrying just because they're, they might not be as comfortable, but I like having them. But on the whole, you know, this, uh, this month of November has been about rotating in old things, rotating in, you know, things that... Uh, uh, I was very hyped about for a moment and pulled the trigger on impulsively and then uh, added to my collection, but never fully, dug, you know, carried it a couple of times and then never fully dug into. Uh, so it's, it's decision time. Do you sell? Do you carry? So I've been trying to carry these things. Um, the GEC 14, I haven't carried in a while because I've been into the bigger slip joints lately. So uh, great to rediscover this, but something that uh, really and you know, it's not here and dag nabbit because I left it at work. Uh, but this is something I want to talk about as we wrap up here. And that's, this is gift giving, especially in this time of year. So of course, you know, I'm going to say, give someone a knife and that's, that's obvious, but, um, there is a knife that my brother gave me. It's a, it's a, a Leatherman, uh, clip when they first started putting a clip on the Leatherman, I think it's 20 years old at this point. And it's so loose, you can kind of flip it around like a butterfly knife. And uh, it's just great. It's always been there. It has always been there. I've used it for a thousand things, uh, a million things. It's been now it lives in the in the junk drawer in the in the um, kitchen. Uh, but I had to bring it to work for something because it's still my favorite Leatherman. I have a bunch of Leatherman, but this old one is still my favorite. And the funny thing is, is when I got it, when my brother gave it to me, I think it was Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. We usually uh, tell each other to buy one another something for our birthdays so we don't have to bother. But for Christmas, we get each other something. And uh, he he <laughs> indicated that it was a knife or a bladed implement. And my mind went wild, you know, uh, because he's given me uh, over the years, many, many years, he's given me so many crazy cool knives and, and things. And, and when I opened it and it was a Leatherman, I was like, you know, thanks. This is awesome. You know, I've always been pretty good at that. Uh, but I have to admit there was a bit of disappointment. It wasn't, mm, it wasn't, wasn't menacing enough. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it was too useful. It was more practical than I was going for. Um, but 20 years later, it's gotta be 20 years. I, I really have to date it, but 20 years later, I'm still using the thing and it's still, my favorite of all the Leatherman tools. Now it's not the most comfortable when it's open because uh, this one is just, uh, you know, the handle sides are just folded over metal, folded over into a U shape and cross section. And so the, the edges just kind of bite in if you really have to uh, torque down, on, you know, squeeze down on something. Um, but still it is, it is the one and the blade is still kicking, still very sharp, still gets very sharp. And, uh, all of the implements in it are perfect. It's got a it's got a, a little chisel like that has come in handy. But who whoever thought you'd need a little chisel in there? And uh, 
well, a number of other things. So what I'm trying to say here is um, it might be good to give someone this Christmas or next gift giving opportunity, something like that, something that's not, um, you know, you're not necessarily going for the cool factor or the beauty factor, but you're going for the practical factor. Uh, for instance, I just gave my wife a, a Victorinox classic a few years back and just sort of, here, here you go. I said, REI. Okay, thanks. Like, okay, he's giving me a knife. It was just an excuse for him to buy a knife because he had to get that out. Uh, and now he's just giving it to me. And maybe there was a little truth to that, but Years later, it's still on our keychain, and she's still using it for a lot of stuff, uh, mostly the tweezers and the toothpick. But hey, you know, what else? And the scissors. What else do we need a classic for? You know, you're not going to use that blade for much else, you know, considering you probably have something else on you. So if you get something like that, a classic 10 bucks, 12 bucks, and it has a wide, wide, wide array of different handle scales, you can get all sorts of different commemorative ones. As a matter of fact, I think maybe I'll look into getting a knife junkie one because I, I, you can have your logos put on them and how cool would that be? Uh, but um, yeah, so that's all I'm getting at. Think about getting someone a Victorinox or a Leatherman or something that's not so glorious. And I know there are a lot of people who are really into Swiss Army knives and Leatherman, and I do not mean to um, downplay how useful, cool, collectible and fun they are. Um, they're just not my exactly my thing. Uh, but they happen to be extremely useful. And who does not want a Swiss Army knife kicking around in their backpack or their their purse or whatever they carry uh, on, on a daily basis? You know, I think of the George Carlin uh, bit about having your stuff and you have a home to keep your stuff and then the car to move your stuff around in. Well, I always have a backpack and that's stuff to move my stuff. That's a bag to move my stuff around in when I'm leaving my car, you know, going to the office, still have to have a, a, a good amount of my stuff with me. And uh, so anyway, who wouldn't want to have a Swiss Army knife or Leatherman, uh, you know, rattling around in their stuff? Uh, so that's about it. I think um, I think I think Christmas is coming. I think I got to start thinking about what I'm going to be getting people, you know, <laughs> I am ashamed to admit this show has has uh, very much upped my own sense of what I have and what I'm acquiring. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a great excuse or justification to to really uh, uh, go deep into my materialistic side. But I, I really, uh, um, you know, I'm listening to Nick Shabazz. I'm not getting into watches. I'm keeping my pen thing to a minimum. I'm even employing things like the pass around group and, and favors to try out knives without having to spend money and buy them. So um, that's all I'm getting at. I, I, I guess just as I, uh, as I keep going through November and there aren't too many days left, only eight at this point, or uh, well, by the time you're hearing this, even fewer uh, five, I guess. And then I'll be back at it, but not back at it. I think I'm going to be getting back at it. Like, uh, like one does after, after a sober October, you know, or something like that, with a renewed sense of why you're doing it, not just a habitual um, uh, consumption. Anyway, there you have it. That's my philosophical tidbit for the day. So thank you for joining me on the Knife Junkie Podcast Supplemental Edition. Uh, it's a pleasure. I, I, I'm grateful that you spend time listening to this. And uh, well, uh, I, I'm grateful that there's a whole community of people who share this passion. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to thank Jim behind the switcher, as always, working his magic. Jim, Jim, the man. Uh, we miss you, buddy. All right. We'll talk to you later. Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm the Knife Junkie. I'm out. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.